Hello everybody. I am so sorry for the delay. I've just been having some technical difficulties. I don't know what's going on, but I just couldn't get online for some reason. I'm able to log on. I just couldn't go live with you guys. So I am so sorry for the delay. I hope none of you were waiting for me to come on since I'm about 15 minutes late. So I am, I am sorry about that. I hope you guys were able to see the Go Mama webinar that was on this morning that I got to be a panelist on. That was actually pretty fun. If not, I will post information on that for you guys later. Uh, it was a really good webinar that Hey Mama put on or Hi Mama put on earlier today. So uh, I will post the link to that. They are going to um, be sharing that so that you can watch the replay. There was a three of us panelists on just giving recommendations on what you can do during this time to help with your business. So I hope you guys get the opportunity to see that. And again, I am so sorry. I was pretty late today since um, I don't know what happened. I just could not get I had to reboot everything in order to go live. So I'm not going to keep you guys long today. I just, I hope everybody made it through the week okay, intact. It's been a crazy two weeks, hasn't it? And so I think we're all um, starting to get to our, um, it's starting to get stressful, isn't it? A little bit more so. So we just really have to truck on you guys and just stay positive and really look at what we can just do to empower ourselves in the hi mama um panel that i was on today they asked me to talk a lot about just keeping a positive mindset and why that's so important and that's something i've been talking about if we're going to succeed it's really all about mindset it really is you guys i just i cannot stress that enough so today i'm going to go over some things with you to, uh, some plans i have for you guys just to help i've been trying to think of how are just some ways I can really help more people get through this time and not only get through this time, but what I was thinking is how can I help everybody out there to come back even stronger and better? So I really just not only want to help you through this and be that voice of reason through this and the voice of encouragement, but also help you to come back even stronger. So if your center is closed right now, or even if you're like me and you're at about 50% capacity, there's so much we can do right now to make us come back as even stronger centers, child care providers, and make our businesses more financially sustainable. So what I was really been thinking of is what kind of program can I put in place for you where I can help you to learn how to re recession proof your business? Because what's happening right now is we are coming out of this um even if, if the states and everything, even if we do come out, right, and we go back to work and everything, this is going to affect our economy, right? There's just no if, and, or buts about it. No matter I, the stimulus package, thank God it was passed today, but it's still going to affect us. I, you know, no matter how you look at it. I know, like, for example, for me, I live in an area, um, I live close to the biggest industrial park in the world. And most of that is shut down right now. And that is just kind of scary when you think about it because this is like Panasonic batteries. The plant that makes all the batteries for Panasonic for the country is shut down right now. Uh, Dayhan, which makes batteries for Teslas, is shut down right now. So then they had to shut down the Tesla plants because the Teslas don't have the parts they need. So that is eventually going to come back, right? If they're not making this stuff, that means they can't sell it. And all that is just the cycle of the economy. And it's going to hit us. So I've been thinking, like, where can I bring you the most value? And I came up to the conclusion that I'm going to do a series starting next week that's going to be called a Come Back Stronger. And what I'm going to focus on is things you can start putting into place now with your lower enrollment or if you're closed policies, not just policies and procedures, but practices. Um, how can you get your, your staff to have the right mindset? What can you do to start with better staff onboarding? And so next week I am going to come on live every day at 4 PM. It seems like from the messages I received, 
this time of day seems a lot better for you guys than the morning sessions I was doing. So I am going to go back to doing 4 p.m. sessions next week and I'm going to focus on coming back stronger, helping you to put different things in place so that when you do come back and our centers are back at 100%, you know, because we will get there, then how can you make sure that your business is stronger? And what I'm going to really focus on is if you come back stronger and really just up your quality and put those things into place, you will be able to not only just have a better business, but in turn, that leads to better retention. That means when your business is really solid, you're, it's easier to keep your employees retained and your parents. So it kind of goes hand in hand. Those quality standards and putting really good business practices into place ends up making you more money. It'll make your center more successful. Let's see, Cheryl asks what time zone. So it's going to be 4 p.m. Pacific time zone. So I try to make it not too early Pacific, but not too late for uh, Eastern. And four seems to be a good time, even though some of the West Coast centers are still open. Uh, so, oh, thank you, Cheryl. That really warms my heart. Thank you. So uh, next week, that's what my focus is going to be, is just I'm putting a curriculum together. After Christine and I did the video yesterday, I talked to her about helping me put something together next week where I can bring you guys really good information and uh, that will help you to have a stronger business. Not a whole lot I can do in a week, but I will give you what I can in that week. You know, an hour a day for a week is not a whole, but I, I can do enough to make a, a difference. I can definitely give you guys enough information to impact your business. So we'll start with that, right? So that's my plan for next week. And I do plan on just keeping and, you know, until this is over and we are back to work and things are normal, I will keep on Monday through Friday coming on here to offer encouragement, to offer business support and guidance. That way I most, you know, those of you guys watching, hopefully you will get things put into place. Even if it's just having that right mindset to, in order to go lead your team to have strong you know, just to have a really strong team through this and to have a sustainable team through this. That is really my goal for you guys. So if you have any questions, let me know. And you can also, of course, ask in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer questions. So today, though, I did tell you it was going to be a question and answer day. And I'm sorry, I'm talking fast today, aren't I? I've been, I think I'm a little overloaded on caffeine at this point. So I've just been like, I, it's Friday. I'm so ready for this Friday, you guys. It has been a rough week, I'm sure for all of us, right? So I need to recharge my batteries this weekend for sure. I don't know. I'm probably going to end up vegetating and just doing a Netflix weekend. We'll see. Or go hiking. We'll see. I don't know. Netflix sounds really good this weekend. But basically, the questions I've gotten from you this week are um, one of the themes I'm getting a few questions on is and i'm just going to summarize the theme i'm not going to read the actual question because i've gotten this question just worded in different ways several different times so it's parents keep asking the same questions over and over again and it's kind of hard to keep my patience when i'm asking the same questions so you guys that's really where your strategic plan comes into play that's really where you want to make sure that you take that template i gave you guys and remember it's just a template it's not completed but you want to take that and come up with a plan because once the plan is really clear to you, you're going to be able to articulate it better. You're going to have more confidence when you're telling your staff and your parents what it is, and it will just be a lot easier. The other nice thing about it is you can print it and just hand it to them. You can just say, you know, all your questions are answered in this document. Here you go. So that's what I've done. I haven't handed it out to every single one of my families. I did hand it out to my staff. And I've told you guys in a different video, the way um, I trained my staff on it was I did a Facebook Live just like this. I recorded a Facebook Live for my employee page. Uh, and that way they can watch it whenever they had a moment. And I just went through an overview of the strategic plan so that they could watch it, you know, during nap time, whatever. They can hear it from me. There's no miscommunication. And they understood. And then they did get a print copy. As for my parents... I just keep a bunch at the front office if they ask, and they know there is a sign that says, you know, if you would like our detailed strategic plan, please ask. And some of them have, and I've given them out. So, but I only do, if they start asking a lot of questions, then we do hands like, you know what, all your questions are answered 
in this document. Or um, if they request it, I give it to them. So that's pretty much how I deal with that. And it really has helped us with the questions. See, Corey says parents and employees will ask a lot. Yes. Um, it is. It is a way that they try to get control over the situation. We as humans, especially women, we want control, right? And it's just human nature. When things feel like they're out of control, we try everything in our power to grasp control. There is no controlling the situation, you guys. So you guys see the toilet paper shortage out there? That's all about control. It is a way that people can feel like they're in control of the situation, okay? If they have six months of toilet paper, six months worth of canned food, it gives them a sense of control and a false sense of security. That's all that is. That being said, we need to honor that need in people to have that sense of security. We really need to honor that. So the way we can honor that is by giving them the answers they need to help them to feel in control. And I've said, I think in one of my videos last week, that this is not something that we can have control over, but we can take command over the situation. And as leaders in our centers, we need to take command in the situation. And remember, if we are owners and directors, we chose to be leaders. We put ourselves in a leadership position. Did we ask for this to happen? Absolutely not. Did any of us sign up for this when we decided to become leaders in our field? No, we didn't. But we did take on that responsibility. When we chose to take on jobs as directors and owners, we basically put ourselves out there and said, I will take charge and I will take command as a leader, no matter what comes my way. So whether it's, you know, some of you guys deal with hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, there's always some kind of disaster, you guys. The only difference is this one's happening to all of us at once. But think about it. When you look at the news, there's always a region somewhere in the world that is dealing with some kind of disaster. The only difference now is that we're all dealing with it at the same time. So just that's what makes this one feel so big and overwhelming is it's all of us at once. So just keep that in perspective. It just, the perspective really helps. When you put things into perspective, it does help. You know, it really helps to understand that it, this, we'll get through this, right? How many other disasters have all of us been through? How many floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes? We've all been through something, right? And we've made it we're going to make it through this too. We will. So just keep that in mind. Communication, it helps give them power. And if you are getting tired of saying the same thing over again, put it in writing, then you can just hand it. It's so much easier just to hand them a document that has all the answers instead of you saying the same things over and over and answering the same questions over and over again. It really does make it a lot easier. And keep in mind, of this, if you're new to my videos, it's something I've been saying, but I'll say it again. Every day is new for us. This is uncharted territory for all of us, right? So we have to kind of make up rules every day. So if you create your strategic plan like I have, be ready to change it every day. When I started my strategic plan and the first one I even put out for you guys was one page long. My outline that I, I keep updating the outline. For those of you, if you guys ever see it pop back up in the feed, it's because I'm updating it. The outline is two pages long at this point. My actual plan that I have within my center is six pages long now because I just keep adding to it, adding to it, and adding to it. So for my members, um, I do give my members, every time I update it, I send it to them. It's like, hey guys, something new came up, I've added to it. So they have everything that every time I create something new, they've got it. But yeah, I mean, just keep that in mind. Every time something comes up, something new, and you have to make a decision, type it out, put it in that plan, and then just be ready to print, you know, whatever your new plan is. Or if you have a private group, like, you know, you can do a Slack account. It doesn't have, you could do Remind. There's so many apps out there. It doesn't have to be Facebook. Facebook is just convenient to have like a group. Just make sure it's private and, you know, for your parents only, and just keep posting that stuff for your parents. That way they know it's like, hey, there's a new update, something new's come up, here's the latest update. So how, I, I know it takes time and it's tedious, but it will save you so much time and headache later on. It'll also save you anxiety. Having a plan just will make you feel in command and your anxiety level will go down so much. 
So I cannot stress that enough. Okay, next question. What about staff that are scared? How are you dealing with that? So uh, this is something that has recently come up for me. A few, it's kind of funny and um, interesting. A couple of the husbands are kind of scared. So it is something I want to honor. I always want to make sure I'm taking care of my staff. That is really important to me. So we did have a staff meeting and um, we just had a really quick meeting and I just told them. And again, I made a video, same thing, that if you guys are scared, please let me know. I'm not going to make my staff work scared. So that does bring up problems, right? Now, how are we going to keep up ratios, group sizes? What are we going to do? So when this all started, and if you guys have been watching my videos from day one, you know, I, this is something I've already recommended and something I've already put into place. And I gave you guys the recommendation. You got to get substitutes ready now. And I know that sounds tough, but they're out there right now. Most of the kids aren't going to school right now, right? If you have to use a high schooler, is it our ideal situation? No, but we are not in ideal times and we have to take actions right now that we necessarily would not take during normal circumstances, right? Right now we are doing what we need to do to protect our centers. You've got to really think about that. Like, do I want to do this? No, but my number one priority is to protect my center. So if you have to recruit high schoolers who aren't going to school right now, that's what we have to do. College students are a great option. I'm sure you guys, there are so many college students right now who got sent home, right? So even if you're not in a college town, there's probably lots of college students who got sent home who aren't working right now who would make great substitutes, right? Because they're, they want temporary. They are going to end up going back to school, so they don't want a permanent job. Same thing with the high schoolers. They, well, the high schoolers may have like evening jobs, but during our hours of operation, they normally would be in high school maybe. So they make a great option right now. Uh, the other thing are teachers. Teachers are out of work right now, right? So talk to them. Maybe they want a side job. Teachers can be really easy to get vetted through the state pretty fast because they already have their background. It, it's just faster. They still have to go through all our hoops, right? But since they're already in the system, they're just faster. So put it out there. Post, you know, anyone want to be a substitute? We may never have to use our subs, right? I have I, I'm so paranoid right now. I have like six subs lined up and just in case, I don't know what's going to happen. And I've, I have selected people who don't have young children who, you know, who are just kind of by themselves and they're not going to put anyone else at risk. Uh, I really have, you know, I made that in my messaging really strong that for the people I was recruiting as substitutes, like, Hey, I am looking for subs, but make sure you're not, you know, asthmatic. You're not at risk. You don't live with somebody who's at risk. That kind of thing, because those are my my staff members that have chosen to be laid off during this time. They are all dealing with either they are at risk or they have somebody who is at risk. So um, that's the kind of thing we got to look at is making sure that you're not going to use a sub who then is also going to in turn decide they don't want to work because they're scared. So recruiting subs, I cannot stress it right now. Even if we don't use them, it will take your anxiety level down to take action on that. The other thing on that too, I found, um, I was actually approached, there are some nonprofits that aren't working right now that were actually willing to help me out with that too. So call uh, like your, if your communities have home visitors, they might be willing to substitute right now. Uh, so your, call your county. They might be able to suggest some of the nonprofits around that, you know, even like human services in your area, they might be able to have employees that are, um, not working right now that might want to substitute for you. So that's just another idea. Uh, okay. One of, uh, so actually one of the series of questions I was getting is how, what can we do? Cause I keep telling you guys, let's use this opportunity, you know, seize this moment. I keep sending that message. So one of the questions I did get was how can we come back stronger? Hence the series I'll be putting on next week. That's pretty much where I got that idea from. So we're coming back stronger. There's so much we can do. So next week, I'm going to dedicate my entire week to helping you guys come back stronger. I'm going to do it the same way I did my enrollment boot camp. I'm going to create a workbook for you guys with resources ahead of time. So it's more like an official class. So it will, um, I'm going to try to make the sessions a little shorter. I think these uh, longer sessions are getting a little old. So I don't know about you guys, but um it's a, if you guys don't mind them, let me know in the messages what is preferable. But I think uh, our attention spans are getting a little bit shorter right now. So 
but it's really up to you. If you guys don't mind the hour, I don't mind giving you guys hour long lessons. Um, and I think uh, just, oh, I, I've been getting questions about quality and because I keep saying that you can charge more for quality, but a lot of people don't know what quality really looks like. And again, I was an owner once upon a time who didn't know what it meant. So that's why I kind of go back to that research based. I did talk about um, the Itters and Eckers, the infant toddler um, guidelines and the um, preschool age guidelines. I will again put those in the link. I did put them in uh, links added in on a different video, but I'll add them to this one too. Next week, I'll really go into that more. Uh, quality is a big, I mean, it, it affects every aspect of our programs from management to the classrooms. Uh, and next week, I, since I have two classrooms closed, I'll probably even film one of those for you guys so you can see my classrooms. Um, one of, I am actually taking advantage of having two classrooms closed and I'm uh, actually having my teenagers who are home right now, well, my 21 year old and my seven, uh, 16 year old, I'm putting them to work every day. I'm making them come in and we're repainting the classrooms. We're doing everything, just completely refinishing furniture. I um, asked my director too, if her son wants to come in, he can help me sand and paint and do what we want. So by the time we reopen, my center's my center will look brand new again. So, you know, just seizing those opportunities. That's really, you guys, the mind shift I really want you to make. Instead of focusing right now on that negative end of things and how like awful it is, look at the opportunities. If you're closed, you're, this is the perfect time to do all those chores around your center that you've been wanting to do for years. Do your walls need to be painted? Now's a great time to paint your walls. Do they even just need to be cleaned if you can't get to a paint store right now? You know, if, I don't know, our Lowe's is still open. That was designated essential so I can get paint. But if you can't get paint, maybe you can just deep clean your walls. Get some, you know, just dish soap and a sponge and scrub your walls. Uh, cycle out the materials that are on your walls. Get old things off and put new things on. You know, wash your curtains, wash your blinds. Just make your centers look new again. So it's so much we can be doing right now. So next week though, we will work on actual like program management, how can we can improve our quality. So that is all I have for today. You guys take care of yourself this weekend. Make sure you rest and do something good for yourself. Take some time to just relax and I will talk to you guys again on Monday and I will post more information for you guys about next week. Have a great evening.